Hey, my friends, I am back at you with another rumination. Um, oh, this lighting is less flattering than <laughs> what it was before. Oh, I'm so vain. Anyway, um, we're going to talk, speaking of vanity, we're going to talk about the suit of wands, which is like super vain. All right, let's just close my messages app for a sec. That way we don't hear that sound. So the suit of wands, um, uh, <laughs> It's, it's these videos are so interesting to too because it's like really it's, try, it's trying to sort of like codify what I've been thinking about for the last bunch of years. Um, so when I started reading, the suit of wands to me had a lot to do with what I would call vocation, and it was sort of your the path that you wanted to be on. And and I was a young uh, actor at the time, and I wanted to be famous and have a career, and that was the most important thing to me at that moment. And so the suit of wands sort of encapsulated all of that for me um over time i have come to see it m in a much more nuanced way i still do think it's that um but i think it's much more sort of broadly about passion and desire the if you think about what fire is there's a lusty wanting you know i know that i tend to focus a lot on sex and tarot but i mean sex is a good metaphor because we are animals you know what i mean and that's just a part of who and what we do and um but it's whatever you desire or whatever you want or whatever you're passionate about and that's how i tend to think of the suit of the suit of wands broadly um i think about fire as an element i think very uh, literally i guess i mean fire is an interesting element it heats it burns but it needs fuel it needs oxygen and without those two things it fizzles out it dies and so the thing about desire is that it is is unsustainable on its own and so it actually needs the other elements in order to uh, survive you know what i mean it needs water to um tone it down or create steam too much water can put out a fire but um, you know what I mean? It, or it needs air to feed it and it needs earth to have something to burn, you know? So it like it, it thrives better um, when it is not only when it's not the only element. If there's too much fire uh, in a reading, likely it will be unsustainable. Uh, it will burn out. Either it will run out of oxygen or it will run out of fuel. Um, and so the thing about fire is that you have to think about its sustainability um, and you have to think about what it's burning. You know, um, one one example, I think like cups have the reputation of being the relationship suit. And certainly when paired with wands, they they can. Wands are relationships, too. But if you if you've ever had like a really hot and heavy relationship that just fizzled out really quickly, you know, it was like all in for like a week and then it just faded. That is that is a relationship that has too much fire in it. You know, there needs to be something more than that. Um, and so, like, the nice thing about fire is it is hot, it is sexy, it is it is filled with ambition and need and want and energy, because fire is energy. So it, it drives. Um, but without proper planning, without um, uh, fuel and oxygen, it will, it will fizzle. So, uh, the suit of wands is, is pretty much all about the, that idea. Now, I don't, I used to really limit it to the idea of vocation because that was what I needed it to be at the time. I don't really think of it only that way now. The suit of wands is every part of life. You know, you can feel that want and desire and energy at work. You can feel it in relationship. You can feel it in your creative life. You can feel it if, I don't know, at the grocery store, if you're really hungry. Um, you know, so it doesn't need to be sort of a major, like, I want to be a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist. It can be something small um, because their readings have size and scope. And you always want to think about size and scope with a question. Now, to kind of approach the, the individual cards, um, it's harder for me to do now than when I first made those rumination videos because I have changed the way that I read a lot. And the the main adjustment that I made was that I tend to focus on the element and the number as well as the image if I'm reading with a Rider Waite Smith deck. And if I'm reading with a Pip deck, then the image rarely tells me anything. Although I do from time to time call on traditional Rider Waite Smith associations. 
Um, so I'll kind of talk through how I work with the suits um, in, a, in a really general way, but this won't be as kind of specific as it was the first time I did it. Because as I said in the Trump's video or the Major Arcana video, like one of the things that I've been working on is trying to neutralize the cards and sort of remind everybody that they actually don't mean a whole lot outside of context. So, topped off the decaf iced coffee. Hopefully that'll sustain me through the four suits. But I'm going to do each suit as a different video. So the Ace of Wands, um, Aces as number one are Impulse, Seed. I think of them as sort of nascent a lot, so they're not yet fully realized. It's like the idea of something, the inspiration of something. Um, and so with the, with the suit of Wands, it's kind of this thing of um, like, oh, I think I kind of want that. You know what I mean? Like when you're when you're like watching a commercial, or you're like, like Apple has a new product, and you're like, I think I kind of want that. Like, the, or or a person, you know what I mean, from across a crowded room, you're like, oh, I kind of want to go to bed with them. That's the Ace of Wands. It's like the impulse of desire, or the the idea of suddenly wanting something. The two, um, which if you look at the picture, I think that the Golden Dawn called that card Lord of Dominion. Or was that the three? Doesn't matter. Um, so two in my system of numerology is like a magnet. It attracts and repels. And so with fire, you it's like the the mating dance. It's the thing of like, I kind of like you. I don't know if I like you. Come to me. It's a seduction. But also it can be a repulsion. Uh, because remember, with wands is fire and desire. It's like pull. So it's like, ooh, in the ace, it's like, I kind of want that. In the two, it's figuring out, do I? Like, I really want that. Oh, wait, no, it's too much. You know, and again, if you think about being in a relationship with someone, it's like that sudden, like, oh my God, this is so hot and heavy. Oh my God, it's too much. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I need to, this is going too fast. It's that kind of push and pull. And and with another person, it is kind of that mating dance of like, do I like you? Do you like me? Do you like me enough for me to like you? Do I like you enough for you to like me? And you're trying to figure out the attraction. That's kind of how the two works. Um, I don't, I don't know how to sort of talk about the Rider Waite Smith images in the suits anymore. It's weird. It's like with the two of of one. I'll obviously put these in the video when I edit it. With the two of wands, um, there's a longing for. I would say, you know what I mean. There's there's like I, you know, it makes me think of um, Veruca Salt. You know, I want the world. Um, there's this sort of desire for. And um, I guess in a way it's similar, you know. Um, but I don't, it's hot, It's really tough because I don't, the image is not central to me the way it used to be. Um, but there is a there is a, an attraction too. There's a desire for in that Pamela Coleman Smith drawing. And I kind of should pull down, fuck it. So I am going to reference the Golden Dawn titles because I can. Um, I'm just doing that because I wasn't breathing and sometimes I do that. So it was Lord of Dominion. Um, you know, I mean, there's this sort of colonization quality to that card um, that's hard to not see uh, for me. And so if the image does draw me in in a reading i'm i'm probably going to be drawn to sort of asking like what are you trying to colonize and i know that that's a loaded word but i i think it's i think it's a loaded concept like what are you taking that isn't yours um you know i cannot not see that card and see columbus so um the three of wands uh which the golden dawn called the lord of uh I'm on a page, the Lord of Established Strength. So it's like you've done the colonizing and you've established your strength. Um, threes to me are growth and expansion and triangulation. Triangulation is a weird phrase to kind of describe in a reading. Um, <laughs> uh, so it expands. And I think in that way, you know, the the three of wands in the Waitsmith does sort of show an expanding empire, you know, and it is Lord of established strength. So you have the ability to 
grow your empire. For me, uh, numerologically uh, and elementally, it's growing. Like the, the attractions there, and it's the fire is burning. The heat is kicking up. You know, um, it will also sometimes mean the result of attractions. So, the the it's interesting. You know, it's like first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes someone in a baby carriage. It's kind of like that. Like the attraction has happened, the the union has occurred, and then there's a, a, a result of that. Not necessarily pregnancy, although that would be a card that would indicate pregnancy was a possibility because sex, you know, attraction leads to X. So it could be that based on the context of the cards. Um, but, uh, which, you know, a birth, a, starting a family is expanding an empire. So... The Four of Wands, the Golden Dawn called Lord of Perfected Work. Uh, so deliciously nebulous, the Golden Dawn. Like, what does that mean? The four Fours are very stable, and they are foundational. Uh, they can also be fuddy-duddy, stick-in-the-mud conservative as well. Um, and so with the Four of Wands, with fire, the fire has started to stabilize, which can be good because it means that there's a good amount of oxygen and fuel sustaining the fire. But it could also mean that it has gotten boring. It has stabilized to the point of like, maybe the attraction's dying. It's the point in a relationship usually where you need to think about like, how do we spice things up? Because if we, if we take this for granted for too long, it's going to fizzle. In the Rider Waite Smith, it's a very celebratory card. You know, this sort of Lord of Perfected Work is like, oh, it's a celebration. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think when you get to that point in life, it can feel very, very um, good, you know, and you can feel like, okay, we've got the family. We, and I don't mean, like, I'm using that as a metaphor, as an archetype of success, right? You start to feel like you're successful. Um, and you you can celebrate that. Like, I can relax. We can have a party. We can afford it. You know, um, you've gotten the thing that you want, and it feels good, and your life is stable because you got the thing you want. That's how I tend to look at it. The five, fives are all about disruptions. So where fours are so stable, fives come along and they shake shit up. And again, sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you, like, you know, the four can be conservative. The five comes along and says, wake up, bitch. You know what I mean? Um, and the, um, so the shakeup can be good, but if you're happy with what you have and the shakeup comes along, that can be bad. Um, and it can be like a shakeup of passions. It can be a shakeup of like, wait, I thought I wanted this thing so badly and I don't, or I got this thing that I thought I wanted and I don't. Or it can be like, I got this thing and I'm kind of bored with it. The Golden Dawn called it Lord of Strife, which is, you know, again, it's 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 so it's so not neutral, all of the esoteric titles, which is one reason why I don't like working with them. Um, but you see it in Pamela Coleman Smith's art. Um, I I just sort of read that image as a reminder of disruption. You know, to me, it's not necessarily a fight. It can be. Um, but it is just a reminder, like, of things getting shaken up and, like, people coming in with big sticks and messing it up. Um, so... The six, the golden gold, gold, ga, 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 golden dawn called the Lord of Victory. And um, sixes, for me, represent beauty in like good things and good, good emotions. And so I do think with the six of swords, you, you are feeling good. You're feeling yourself. You're feeling sexy. You, you're like, wanting is good. You know what I mean? You're, if you're with the six of wands, you're probably in a place where like desire is good. It's a healthy, beautiful thing to want someone or something. Um, and it can inspire you to want to take it further. Um, so that's how I look at the Six of Wands. The Seven, they called um, the Lord of Valor. Take that. Sevens for me are about introspection. Here's where I start to kind of veer from a lot of traditional systems, because when I got into the Seven, Eight, Nine, and Ten, I found a lot of repetition in the research I had done. So my sort of concepts for the numbers are very different Um that I've adapted and learned and taken to heart over the years um, than what you might see in a lot of books because I've, I've tried to come up with a system that felt varied. Seven for me is introspective and it's about sort of returning into the self because a lot of what we've gotten since the one, 
since the ace is very external. There's all that external desire, stabilization, shaking up, succeeding or not. And in the seven, it's kind of like returning to the self and sort of reconfirming what you're passionate about, what it is you really want, um, what it is that you think you're, you're doing and that you want to get out of a situation. So it's checking in with yourself to discover, rediscover your passion, to re reconnect with what it was that got you started on this path to begin with. You know, um, Pamela Coleman Smith's image, um, again, you know, Valor. I, so with the seven Pamela Coleman Smith's image, I think, um, you know, what I try to do when I read with Rider Waite Smith's style decks is I try to reconcile where I can the way that I read with the number and the element and the image, and that's not always easy. Um, but I think, you know, in, in that image is, is sort of keeping the world at bay for me. So it's just like, no, like, this is my time. I need to reevaluate. You know, this is where I am. This is, this is for me. It's not for you right now. We're about me and what I need. So that's kind of how I reconcile the image uh, there. With the eight, um, with the which they call the Lord of Swiftness, I mean, I really do see it that way. I mean, it's like things are moving fast. You know, it's also sort of setting a course and pushing forward. Um, I don't have kind of a revolutionary vision of that card. Eights for me are work, um, or responsibility, sort of the things that you do to make success. And so it can be, you know, you're, you're doing what you got to do to get what you want is sort of what that represents. And and it does to me, like I think about being a creative person, it's like no one's going to publish your novel unless you send it out. And that's kind of what I think about when I see that. The Nine of Wands, the Golden Dawn called the Lord of Great Strength. And it's funny because when you look at the Nine and Ten in that deck, um, you know, they've got a very kind of like negative vibe to them. And the Ten they call the Lord of Oppression. So you do get that sort of weight. Um... <clears throat> nines to me are like the exhaustion after like you've put in like in the eight you do the work and in the nine you're like fuck i'm tired and i'm not done yet and there's more to do and you it's like the grind you know you gotta keep pushing you've gotta get over the hurdle and in the 10 you get to that hurdle you complete the task so eight nine and ten have a very kind of uh special trilogy for me it's like putting in the work being exhausted by and still having to do it and then getting it done um, the Nine of Wands, so then, to, like, the Nine of Wands actually kind of is a perfect image for the way I read it, because it's like, you have been through all this shit, and you still have more to do, and that sort of battle-weary, scarred person who's on the defense is like, they, they know that they're not done yet, they have to keep carrying, you know, they have to keep going, keep on the defense, and, like, keep moving towards what they want, um, and that's sort of how I look at it. And then with the 10, it's kind of a reminder that when you get what you want, it's not over, you know, like you got to keep, you got to keep carrying that. And an interesting thing with the 10 too, is that there's a, um, a quote that Truman Capote used in what would have been his last book. He never finished it. I think it was by St. Teresa of Avila. And the quote is that more answered prayers are shed. No, more tears are shed over answered prayers than unanswered ones. And with the 10, it's sort of like you got what you want, but then you have to carry it when you get there. And so, you know what I mean? So like, you know, it's, you, you got there, but you're, you're like, you know, you're a little sort of bent and broken from, from having done it. So um, that is how I think about the suit of wands. Um, the courts, I did a whole video on the courts, so I probably won't spend a whole lot of time on them. Um, the, 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 I just sort of take the action verbs or the, the roles, the responsibilities that I have for the courts and I pair them with the elements. So the page is a student, um, you know, the knight is a hunter, the queen is uh, a facilitator and the, just to sort of boil down, the king is an embodiment. And so the, the, the page of wands is discovering a lot like the, uh, the ace is sort of like learning what they want. The knight is going and looking for it. The queen is enabling it or bringing it forth and the king is embod is sort of owning it. And so that's how I think of the court of swords at a very base out of context level. Um, so that's the suit of wands. So I hope that was interesting. And I'll do each of the suits in a separate video, so you'll see cups in another video. All right, be well.